So one of the major things where they happen for each and every economy, and I said, so if we get policies where we say they help um, entrepreneurs um, do what exactly did they do for inside the economy. And these policies, now they shape their businesses, now they shape industries, and now they shape the entire economy at large. Now, why would they always come here so you understand some of these policies? And my name is Frank Pagbo. Now, we'll go straight into some of the stories where we also get um, for today. Um, the number one story we say we get for here, now, say Senate, though, they, don't, they don't want multi-choice. Um, make them no go ahead with tariff increase because they get one time where we say um, they don't they pass the message, see they want increased tariff, they want to do this, do that. But Senate don't stamp the, they don't, you know, they don't stamp them. So they make them no triumph. Say if they triumph, hmm, say, they go so, they say they go show them um, um, shaggy for inside the matter if they triumph. Now why they come out, talk, say may they no triumph, may they no increase their tariff. But the number two story we say we get for here, we say um, inflation don't hit, um, it don't hit all time high for the U.S. 40 years 40 years back, now they get this kind of inflation. We say they get at this point in time, and it affects their petroleum product. It also affects um, um, food prices. Food prices don't skyrocket for inside US. I want jackpot. I want run commod. Things hard for here. Things also hard for inside Sena climb. Sometimes if you reason the matter. Now why I come here a couple of days back? Can't tell you the effect of waiting we day about to experience for the global economy. So if you dare, if you they very very informed about what they happen for the global space, you will understand. Say no, be just Niger, nine they be the economic hardship. Nine they happen. It also happen for inside um, Sinar climbs. Where we say we get eight point five percent. Nine be their inflation rate at this point in time, highest in the in the last forty years. If you ask me, and if you ask me, all this kind of matter, you gonna say a lot. They happen for inside different different economies for inside also the global space now why are we raising the matter say for this business takeaway segment what in exactly we want to talk about one major product product we say they control a lot of economy for inside the global space now the oil sector and um, the oil sector and a sector we say get a lot to do with different different economies for around the world if you're talking of the uae you talk niger niger i mean the highest producers of oil for inside Africa. So if you they talk Nigeria, you they talk US, you they talk, you they talk countries where they are among OPEC, uh, you're going to say a lot they happen for the oil sector. What really they happen for the oil sector? A um, couple of months back or weeks back, we, they, we, we hit all-time all high in recent time as regards the price of oil per barrel, $120 um, dollar per barrel, we say we hit. And it, it, sometimes it they drop, it they hover between 110 102 but in a long time, you don't tell me say the price of oil per barrel don't hit that price. What did exactly happen? At this point in time, we say the price of oil don't hit that kind of huge, that kind of high price. Why in Nigeria know they make money? What did exactly they happen to the oil sector for inside the country? Um, a couple of weeks back, we also experienced the fact, say, a lot of um, oil we come into the we come into the country, it is contaminated. We get few few scarcity and all of all this. Now we reason the matter. Say we will bring man. We see understand a lot for this oil industry, for the oil space, for the oil sector, for inside Niger. We get Mr. Mukhtar Mohammed. You're very much welcome, Mr. Mukhtar Mohammed. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what did exactly they happen for the oil sector um, at this point in time? Knowing fully well, say the price of oil, they juicy. Lots of countries right now, they smile, go bank. Why in Nigeria right now only this might go bank? May you explain to my people? Well, normally, yeah. suppose be when price of oil go up, mm. we're supposed to be happy. Mm. But unfortunately, we're not go happy because we know they refine most of our petroleum product. We, we refine less than 10% yeah. for this country. So what happens is that we are more in term importing. So when the price goes up, mm. it affects us. Because the refined petroleum product will bring come in yeah. will come at a higher cost. Okay. Now, even if we do one for our country here, yeah, it could still also get that um, um, we we'll still buy for international price, but the refining cost will come down. Hmm. So it will help us reduce the price. May I give an example? If we, if 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 we get the crude for Portaco refinery. Okay. So you will refine it for Portaco refinery. So you know we we'll pay those port charges. When they jack the price up. So you also refine, then you send to the pipeline, or if you want, not ordinary in developed country, then they use tanker again. Just send them to the pipeline, and that is it. But unfortunately, we will not get down. So once the price of crude go up, it's supposed to be celebration time for Nigeria, but it'll be bad time for us. That's why the federal government say before that they mark 3 trillion yeah. for subsidy, they don't raise them to 4, 4 trillion. trillion. 
That is one. Secondly, again, we get challenged with our exchange rates. So some of these products, when you bring and come in, the exchange rate, though, they get different type of exchange rate. Remember, say so we don't move from official rate of about 360 to 416. That's right. So that one to go affect. Yeah. Then we get the cost of production. Because the way when they do production now, different from the way in Nigeria they do our own production. Because ordinarily the cost of production, now they make the reduction in the price of any good and services. Remember, say our own too, the cost of production, they high. They very high. Then security. We know they make the kind of money what we're supposed to make because oil, they, they thief our oil. So instead of also they meet the oil, the OPEC target of 1.8 million barrel, we they meet only 1.1 million barrel because of thief. So we don't get enough money to come into. So those are the four major challenges Factors. when they affect us with that. Okay, but looking at them, um, um, on the 5th of April, we see uh, Mr. President talks to make we increase our benchmark from $62 per barrel and we increase and enter $73 per barrel, um, um, the oil benchmark. The oil benchmark. Knowing fully well, say our oil benchmark, they are 63 for the past one year and the price of oil <clears throat> enter more than 100. What thing happen to that deficit, that, um, that, that extra we say we get on top, um, the 63? We get nothing less than 27 at least. For month, twenty-seven naira, twenty-seven dollar for each barrel. Now with the extra ribs we get, why do you know they put them enter the excess crude account? For for us to they save for rainy days, what can exactly be the katakata for that um, chain it, with, no. corruption or what exactly? No, excess crude account. Yeah. they don't cancel that one mm. because they say it's not um, uh, 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 um, legitimate. It's not backed by a constitution. Remember, say excess crude account. Now, President Obasanjo introduced introduce them. That's right. Say, so make with it, save some of our money. So, he create that excess crude account. So, when there is any shock, we just go there, go borrow some money. Remember, say, that excess crude account, not even they exist again. You know, say, when this president comes, they don't share them within the local government. Every state, don't carry state, don't carry federal, go uh, Supreme Court. Mm. So, excess crude account, as it did, now, now, illegal. The one when they come create, when get legal entity, now it be the Sovereign Wealth Account. They call it the Sovereign Wealth Commission. Now then they in part, now then they sponsor part of the second Niger Bridge. Mm. So every OPEC nation, they create what they call the Sovereign Wealth Fund for excess money like this, when they put on there. But then they put on there like that, they go, they take and invest in other economies okay. in the world or use and build other buffer like agriculture, social healthcare. But Nigeria, the problem with GBC, we don't even know the amount of oil when we de, when we produce. We just say at one point, we don't even know how, how much of oil we they sell, how much we they produce. We know if you know what say the ministers come out so come of research say we don't know the exact amount of oil we, we when, produce when we they produce per day. Even the even the minister said also even the the the, the, the um, managing director of NMPC also come tell us say we don't know the exact amount of petrol when we they consume mm. in a day. So all this thing has to do we go back to what they call data. Once no data, no economy can survive. Now data I go tell you know the number of poor people. Now data I go tell you know which area poor people they which infrastructure they need for that area. <laughs> because sometimes. You will be a building infrastructure for the wrong place. Poor man, now what kind of infrastructure you need? Now, infrastructure will provide a daily income. Now, you need for in place. Once you give on that one, it will take on the building set before you move to the next level. Rich man, what do you need? You get your own different type of it. In the look of or ease of doing business, in the look of reducing cost of business, in the look of how you go reduce cost, then employ more people, then expand. All these things, now data will produce them for you, unfortunately. Will not get her. Okay, uh, if, we, if, we, if we draw perspective now from Senac Limes, um, the UK right now, they don't talk say 20, 2030, say they go stop um, the use of fossil fuel cars, uh, meaning say um, the demand for oil don't they reduce gradually. The US to also get out for their, play, for their plan, they will, they will talk of Tesla and all of all, all about these um, electric vehicles. For UAE also, for the past how many years, they don't, they don't, even, they don't even forget say they get oil. 
they have it in abundance, but they don't they get one account where you say all the money just they go in. Nobody there they source they, 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 they take money from and all that. What's the really plan for Nigeria? Knowing fully well, say this demand, it don't they drop. It just be like woman we be say or person we be say in investing um, typewriting skills at this point in time. The demand is not there anymore. Nobody needs you as a typewriter. So, typewriter. so imagine say we now we don't they invest, we still they, we still they put all our energy into the ice oil sector. What do you got to say regarding that and diversification? Um, I think of leadership when we get. Because even for the P petroleum industry bill, bill yeah. when they just passed now. Yeah, we, we, we even celebrate them. Like when we celebrate them. They see they talk about uh, uh, making some place oil producing country. They see they talk about NMPC profit, one point something. Well, I, mean, I, I don't avoid the percentage of the profit. Go, go back into discovering of new oil wells. So instead of them to be look and say, okay, how can we use this resource to begin to develop renewable energy? energy yeah. We're not even looking at that one at all. So that bends to the type of leadership. Like this generation will talk up. Maybe because we still get many, many analog people for leadership. So they never begin to think, say the economy has gone digital. That's right. Look, every economy, like you talk, they try to help their people, especially in trying time like this. Like you, they, I see your introduction, they talk about inflation and everything. Yeah. Especially in the price of oil and gas. Yeah. That's where it's now they're the whole inflation day now. So but what other economy they do, they get some other policies when they be put in place. Like the US get tax for every petroleum product you buy when you pay you will pay tax. They don't cancel, they don't remove them hmm. to reduce the suffering of their people. Yeah. So that's how government they think. Government is there for their people to provide two things that make we get government to prosperity and security. Anything outside of that, government not the function. So as we did now, and then when you talk about prosperity, then you go be innovative. And we don't look calm. The biggest companies in the world, not the company when they produce oil, gas, mm -hmm. and this. Now service companies, yeah. and most of these service companies, now technological driven company. So the problem we get, we say, as a country. We like doing things the way we did do them before because why? We get the same set of leaders, count them from the 1960s to today. You go still see them, then get their place. They have always been there, whether as civil servant, whether as DG, whether as PAMSEC. So we never change. Very few leaders start their life in the 70s. We don't well, even talk 80s. Which innovative measures you see we put in place to make sure, say, hmm. This time, we say we don't the approach. We say how we, which innovative measures if you feel so if you put in place to diversify, <laughs> whether not the agri sector or the digital space. Which innovative Frank, measure, measure? Frank, the only time when they talk about diversification of this country, now when the price of oil come down, <laughs> once the price of oil go up, like we don't forget diversification. Mm. You see, diversification not be rocket science, but the problem is that diversification not open happen overnight. It'd be like you now. Your main source of income will be your salary. Yeah. Then what do you take your salary due? Now you go take build other source of income. Our main source of income, whether we like them or not, whether we diversify tomorrow now or then to go to other, you know, talk about Dubai. You see, say they, they, Dubai use their oil money, enter yeah. tourism. Yeah. So you must diversify with a strategy. So, okay, I did diversify now. Once I'm build agriculture, and if you want to build agriculture, nobody say you go say, okay, then we want to be sufficient in food production, one produce rice, one produce maize, one produce cassava. Rice Everything rice. now, let us get them. No, if you talk of diversification, if you talk of Ghana now, what you go here? Cocoa. When you talk of Nigeria, now everything now won't be there. So, our diversification must be strategic. We must look at our competitive advantage. What do we know so we have do well? well. What did our land feed produce without us doing so much? Mm. That one will reduce cost. Now from there, you go to take that reduction of cost. They enter all that area where you know say they cost um, effective. effective. So the problem we get here for a country is saying our leaders you know they think out of the box. Don't mind I give you one example. Final, final, final example. Yes. The way with the borough. 